Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a beautiful cinematic sequence like what you're seeing on screen now. So for this example, I'm going to be using the example map that you're given in the environment set on the Unreal Marketplace, which is free. So I'll link that in the description down below. And so all the assets used in this map, you can get on there. So I'll leave that in the description down below and I'll show you how to make something which looks like this. So what we're going to do to get started is we're going to find where we want to start this cinematic. So I think I'm going to want to start mine all the way down here and just have it follow this path around like so. So what we're going to do is when we find the position we want to start in, we're going to get a camera. So up in the top left up here, we're going to search for camera. So we're going to be getting a cine camera actor like this, which as you can tell there, this is the best kind of camera to work for a cinematic camera. So this will just make it look a lot nicer. So now you can choose a rig crane or rail depending on what kind of cinematic you want to make. So obviously if that would work better for you, then you can use those. But I'm just going to show you this simple one and this will work great either way. So we'll put this in our starting position here. And obviously you can see where the front of it is facing. And this in the bottom right here is obviously our render picture for it. So our preview kind of thing if you want. So I'm just going to set it out like this. So I think there is a good starting position for me. So in how we're going to create this kind of cinematic cutscene, if you like, is using the level sequence. So with the camera still selected, we'll go to cinematics up here and we'll get add level sequence there like that. And then we'll just choose where we want to save this. I'm just going to save in this content folder here. I'm going to call this cinematic one. So you name this whatever you like and wherever you like. But that's how I'm going to do it for now. And this should open up straight away like so. What we're going to do is just make this a little bit smaller so we can still see a lot of the screen like this. And now what we're going to do is again reselect that camera so we have it like this. And up back in the level sequence here is hit the plus track, act as a sequence, add cine camera actor one. So now as you can see we have this camera actor in this level sequence here and we can manipulate all these values. We get this preview here of what this is going to look like as it knows we want to create this into a cutscene. And so obviously here as you can see we can create different camera cuts so add different cameras in all of this good stuff. So if you know a lot of video editing this would come in very helpful here as you can get really unique with it and mess about this a lot. I can show you the main basic one for just one camera. And then in the actual camera component here you can change the current aperture, the current focal length and the manual focus distance or focus setting. Obviously if you know a lot about cameras this helps a lot here. So the aperture will be how bright the scene is kind of the focal length is how far you can see and the focus is obviously where the camera is focused. But like I say, I'm going to be leaving these as default for here, but mess about with these however you like. The ones I'm going to be messing about with are the transform as I want to be moving the camera. So like I say, I'm going to be moving this camera just along the road, making a nice little scenic path here. So I'm going to be doing that. What I'll do first off is discover, is think about how long I want this to be. So I say I'm going to want this to last around 30 seconds. So what I'm going to do is up here, when it says 30 FPS, I'm going to click on that, go down to show time as, I'm going to select seconds. So as you can see, this is currently five seconds long. So what I'm going to do is go up here, go to playback options, the little arrow there, click on that, we have start zero, and I'm going to put this as 30, meaning this will now be 30 seconds long, like so. And obviously you can choose however long you want this to be, but this is what I want it to be. So like I say, I want the start to be here. So what I'm going to do is open up the location here and also the rotation as I'm going to be manipulating where it is and also which way it is facing. So I'm going to just create a keyframe on all of these. So I'll hit this little button in between the arrows to create a keyframe in this position on the X, the Y and the Z, and then also on the roll, pitch and yaw, as I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna be manipulating, I may make it face different directions, move different ways. So it's just a good idea to create a keyframe on all of those just in case you do change them. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this camera to where we want it next. So I'm gonna just obviously bring it all the way up to over here. So the way this is rotated, it's a little awkward, so it's like this, but obviously you do it however you want and then I'm going to raise it up a little bit as well and then we'll move the camera to where we want it to be so I think I want it to travel that distance in about five seconds as you see that has put this back to the start so obviously that's just a reference to where we want it to go so I will then move it back again so it might be a better idea to move the time first 
I did this just so I knew where we're going so that I knew how long I wanted it to take. Again, move the camera back to there. Again, I want that to be five seconds. So what I'm gonna do again is now hit the keyframe once again in this new position. So we now have the keyframe there for all of these positions again, meaning if we do this, you can see the camera is moving to there. Now it is moving over there for some reason, which obviously isn't where I told it to go. So what I'm gonna do is just delete these keyframes and redo this. So if I just move this camera again to where I want it to go, add the keyframes again, you can see this has now worked that time. So I'm not sure why it didn't work that time, but it does now. So you can see in the bottom right what this is gonna look like. So I think that looks great for the moment. So where do I want it to go next? I wanna keep going down here. So I'm gonna move this along, maybe another, another 10 seconds. Let's get this to around 13 seconds. I think that's good. So once again, I'm just gonna move this through here. So you can see it's quite simple like this. You simply just move the timeline along and then move your camera to where you want it to go. So like I say, again, if you do a lot of video editing, you know a lot about keyframes and stuff like this. So I'm going to go here, I'm also going to rotate it just a tiny bit, like so. And again, add new keyframes for all of these values. So now if we go along this, you can see that it is doing this like so. So this works perfectly. Again, now put it forward a little bit like this, and then move the camera where you want it to go. So I want it to just move over here like this. Now with a corner, you may want to do it separately. So as you can see, it's now done like this, meaning it's going to kind of take the quickest route there, so it's going to go that way. So now, this might look fine for you, but you might want to change this. I think for me, that looks all right. Now you may also want to change the rotation to make it a bit smoother, a bit bigger, whatever you like, but I think for me, this is going to look okay. Obviously, get into more details with it for yourself. Again, move the time forward a little bit, and then just move your camera. Like I say, very simple, very repetitive like this. Again, add in your keyframes like so. Look over it, that's looking beautiful like so. Move forward a little bit more and as you can see, we're coming up to this kind of passageway here. So what I think I wanna do is put this up even further. So what I'm gonna do is move this forward slightly, rotate it again, but bring it up a lot higher like this. And now again, add in these keyframes like this. And then once again, move this to where I want. Pull the timer up, move this through here. What I'm going to do is do it there again, so then I have the rotation, and then I'll probably bring this all the way up to the end, 30 seconds like that. Bring it all the way through here and out the other side like this. And move this over, and I think this should be good for me. So if we just go through this very quickly, you see we're just taking it down this path. Obviously this is just a very quick one for me. You might want to do it in more detail, make it look a bit nicer for you. But I think this is gonna work quite well just for this little testing out phase I'm doing. And again, mess about with more settings if you would like. But this is just a basic moving the camera through a place in your game like this. So I'm gonna save that and then I'm gonna close it. Now, what we're gonna do is you can see the camera's gone all the way back down here to the starting position, which is obviously where we want it. And then as I want it to start here, I also want to trigger it here. So what I'm gonna do is add in a box trigger to be able to trigger this here. So it's gonna be when the player walks into this location, it will then trigger this animation to play or this cinematic cutscene sequence that we have. So I've got a box trigger here. I just make it up so it covers this whole path. Obviously make it the right size and scale for you, but this I think will work perfectly for me. So just when you walk through this little part on the road, it will then play this. So then to be able to trigger this, what we're gonna do is open up our level blueprint. So go to blueprints, open level blueprint like this. And then we're just gonna make this a little smaller like that. Select our box trigger that we just made and then drag and drop a reference to that into your level blueprint like this. Do the same with the cinematic. So drag and drop a reference to the cinematic in there as well. So now in the level blueprint, we have the box trigger and the cinematic. And so actually if we delete this box trigger here and just select the box trigger in the level here instead. So select it and then go back into your level blueprint, right click and get a begin overlap. So up at the top here, add on actor begin overlap for the trigger box one. So here we go, like that. Out of other actor, all we can do is simply cast to our character. Mine is the third person character, but this could be first person for you or whatever you've named it. And out of this, what we're gonna do is simply drag as third person character. We're gonna disable movement, which is gonna character movement there. And this is basically just so that the character can't move while you're in the cutscene, which is obviously what you probably want so that the character can't just wander off and then in your game might end up getting killed. So we'll disable movement like that. And then we'll drag off the reference to the cinematic, come out of this and we're gonna get a sequence player. Get sequence player down the bottom here. And out of sequence player, we're gonna drag out and get a play mode. So play like that and just plug that into there 
like so. So that it's now going to play that after we disable the movement. And then out of the play, we're going to get a delay. And this is going to be for how long your cutscene is. So like I say, I made mine 30 seconds. So what we're going to do is put that as 30 there. And after this, we're going to just re-enable the movement. So drag off of character movement again that we got earlier. I'm going to set movement mode down here. Set movement mode. I'm going to set this to walking like so. And this should now be done. So we do also have some other settings that we can look at. So if you click on the camera here, obviously you can change what these will look like. So the kind of ratio here, you've got 16 to 9, film, digital film, DSLR, all of that. You can mess about with these if you want. The different lens settings that you can have. All of this good stuff, the focus settings. So obviously again, this helps a lot if you know about cameras. So you can just look at all of this and change it for what you want it to be. So now if we also click on the cinematic, we can change all of these as well. So you have autoplay, you can loop it, play rate. So if you want to speed it up, slow it down where it starts, it starts at random times, all of this good stuff that you can, again, mess about with. And there as well, you have hide player, hide HUD. So if you have a HUD, you can obviously disable that in here because it knows it's a cinematic, or if you want to not show the player in there, you can do that as well. Like I say, just mess about with all of this to get it perfect for you. So obviously I don't need to hide the player or the HUD because the player is behind the cinematic and I don't have a HUD on here, but that would work. And then also back in the level sequence here as well, so we go back in there, you can also add different filters on here. So you can add animated tracks, you can add audio, different cameras, all of this. So again, it's very simple to just add layers on layers on here. And it's the same as to what I've just shown you, obviously just with audio instead of moving a camera. So I've shown you the basic principles of it and you can then add that onto different things. And so one final thing as well, up at the top here, what you're gonna need to do on the camera tracks here is just drag this all the way out to the end. Otherwise, it will only play that first part there. So this is kind of an annoying little thing that you might sometimes forget because it doesn't do it automatically. But I think that's just because it then allows you to edit it like you would a video and put in different cameras like that. But once you've done that, what we're going to do is save this again. So again, mess about with all this that you want. And then if we just play the game here to test this out, so if we hit play, what we can do is walk through this box trigger here. We are now possessing the camera. We're watching it. We're going through the forest that we have created here. And this looks great. So obviously this isn't the best example that I've made, but like I say, I just made it really quickly. You obviously put in a lot more time into it. This is just a very simple, basic way of doing it that I've shown you. So you can then use the skills you've learned here to make much bigger and better ones in the future. So it ends there, we are now back, and we can move the player again. Obviously I just then accidentally walked back into the box trigger, but obviously if you don't want that to happen, so it doesn't then play again, what we can do is back in the level blueprint here, is after we've set the movement mode again, what we're gonna do is get a reference to the box trigger. So if we just make this a bit smaller, select the box trigger here, drag and drop it in there, make this bigger, and we'll just come out of this and destroy actor there, plug that in, and now we shouldn't be able to do this again. Now you can do this just before this as well, but this also works. So now if we try this again, when we walk through the box trigger, we are getting this beautiful cinematic again, which obviously edit, make however you like. And then once this is finished, we should see we can't then, we can move again, sorry, but then we can't re-enable this cinematic once again. So I'll get back to you once the cinematic is finished and we'll test that out. So it's just finished. If I now walk around, I can walk back through here and it isn't re-enabling it once again. Obviously you can keep it there if you want, but for me, I don't want it to be re-enabled. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done what we wanted to do. We've created a cinematic camera to travel through the woods here and create a nice cinematic cutscene, which obviously you can edit as much as you want, change as much as you want. I've just taught you how to do that, the basic part of it, which you can then adapt those skills into the other parts of this to make it look a lot nicer than what I have done very quickly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.